hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be part two of my two part video series talking about my experience going to see a functional doctor. So last week I talked all about all the different investigations that we did into my gut health, what the different findings were, what the different treatments were. And today we are going to be focusing more on the kind of the hormones. Uh, so looking all at my hormonal profile and what the different symptoms were that I was having at the time. And again, same format, just looking at the different tests that I did, the results. And then I'm also gonna finish off this video talking about my overall impression, I suppose, of going to see a functional doctor. And if this is something uh, that I would recommend if you are interested in doing the same. So the kind of the pros and cons of doing that. So I think that's kind of more enough of an introduction before we get started. If you wanna hit the like button, that really helps my channel. If you wanna subscribe, you haven't subscribed, yet please do so and uh, yeah let's just jump straight in so before we start jumping straight into the, res the tests that I did and the results um, I think it's interesting to talk about what some of the issues were that I was having with my hormones and why I felt like something was off. So first of all, I naturally have longer cycles. So they're sort of on the 35 day mark when they are regular. I have had a history of having extremely, extremely painful periods, not necessarily super heavy, but just very, very, very painful, especially on the first day. So those two things to me were a suggestion that I definitely had some hormonal imbalances going on. We were also at the time trying for a baby. So it was really important that I address some of these things, which otherwise I've kind of sort of slightly swept under the carpet. Maybe most of you know, I also have very thin hair, um, which can be a sign of excess androgens. Again, could be a hormonal imbalance. And what's interesting about your hormones is that they are very connected to your digestive and your gut health because your hormones are essentially metabolized in your body through your digestive system. If you have potentially poor gut health, then that could also be impacting your hormone health as well. So to, to test the hormones, um, I did something called the Dutch test, which is the dried urine testing something something. Uh, basically what you do is that you, you kind of urinate on um, these little bits of paper and then you dry them out and the lab then tests for the different metabolites that are going through your body throughout the day. So there's like a, a kind of a schedule that you have to you have to test on. This tests for mostly for uh, estrogen, so your estrogen metabolism, your progesterone metabolism, androgens and also your cortisol. So the results look slightly complicated. So I will kind of talk through what the key findings were as we're going through. Let's start over here. So looking at my estrogen and my progesterone, my progesterone was fine, but the estrogen was more of an issue. So estrogen is metabolized in various different pathways. Some of these pathways are good and healthy. They detoxify and they just remove estrogen from your body, whereas other ones are potentially more toxic and they can actually, over time, lead to an increased risk of things like breast cancer uh, and ovarian cancer and other hormonal cancers. So really you kind of want to make sure that you are um, not metabolizing through the, the sort of the, the more harmful pathway, I suppose. And you can see these kind of scores here. Again, it's a little bit complicated, but I can talk through it. So basically what this is showing is that I'd have too high of various forms of estrogen and that is potentially a, a sign that I have uh, something called estrogen dominance and we have estrogen you can have the same symptoms if you have low progesterone because it's a balance between estrogen and progesterone so if you had normal estrogen but you had too low progesterone you would also have the same symptoms of estrogen dominance but in my instance because my progesterone was normal and healthy it definitely showed that I, I had too much of the, the kind of the estrogen. So then we look here at the, if we move back down to um, my kind of um, cortisol level. So this was also really interesting. Um, you can see here, these two graphs. So we have daily free cortisone pattern and we also have daily free cortisol pattern. Both are very, very low, like almost in the kind of the low range limit. So when we looked at this, the suggestion here was that I have, adrenal stress. So often we associate cortisol with stress, which is true. If you have too much stress, then you will have high cortisol. But equally, you do want to have fluctuations of cortisol throughout the day. Cortisol helps us to function. It helps us to concentrate. It gets us up in the morning. So you definitely don't want to have super low cortisol. And the theory is, um, again, according to my doctor, was that I had been through prolonged periods of stress, which means that my, my adrenal glands were, for whatever reason, um, starting to fatigue out and are not producing the right amounts um, of cortisol. This is not a medically accepted theory, I just want to preface that, but 
Again, this is what we're going with and this is what I was told. So I don't think we need to talk about the other things too much, um, but my report also did say that I um, potentially have higher levels of androgenic hormones as well, uh, which is more associated with kind of your male hormones. So things like testosterone would be an example of an androgenic um, hormone. Again, there were a few different imbalances that were happening there. So again, the way that we addressed these was kind of three different ways. So firstly, there was the supplements to kind of um, encourage my body to uh, metabolize estrogen through that healthier pathway. The second one was eating lots of cruciferous vegetables, which essentially does the, the same thing, but in, you know, through your food. And then in terms of addressing the stress, um, she recommended really doing quite a lot of like low impact exercises, not doing things like hit exercises too much, going for lots of walks, going for lots of swimming, uh, and basically just not stressing out too much. <laughs> um, there were also some kind of more supportive um, supplements that she gave me again. Okay, so kind of what happened next? So after I've done all of these different treatments, so looked at both uh, the digestion as well as the hormones. So this is quite interesting what happened because I am very skeptical as a person anyway. I'm open to testing and trying out, but for some reason, especially things that aren't expect accepted in the mainstream, I'm always kind of erring on the side of cynicism and caution. But I would say what was very, very interesting is that after I had been on the kind of the protocol um, that this um, doctor put me on, after I'd say maybe a couple of months, I actually went back to my gynecologist who uh, previously had said that every time like she comes in, does a scan of my ovaries, I always have a lot of eggs or a lot of follicles, which is kind of implying that my body's producing the follicles, but it's never kind of getting it over the finish line and getting the follicles to ovulate, which is why my cycles are very long. And um, that's also why it would kind of build up uh, and create a sort of a much thicker lining in the uterus, which is, potentially also why I would have really painful periods. But after I'd seen this functional doctor, it was really interesting because my gynecologist, um, she looked at my ovaries and she was like, oh, are you doing anything different at the moment? And I told her about the fact that I'd seen this functional doctor and she was like, oh, well, I think it's working because your eggs look completely normal. Uh, and of course then the most obvious sign is I got pregnant <laughs> very quickly after this. So I think with the hormones, um, that definitely was quite a clear indicator that something had definitely helped and something was working. When it comes to the digestion and the microbiome, on the other hand, so I always slightly struggle with this because every time I read about microbiomes or if I uh, listen to a podcast or if I do any kind of research or if I do a test like this and you get results back, I find it almost quite overwhelming because your your gut microbiome is such a big complicated ecosystem you know there's millions and billions of different strains of bacteria in there every single microbiome is going to be different it's still a very very new area of science and of research so a lot of the the research that we have is you know it's still so many unknowns basically so it's really hard to know exactly what's working and what's not working and what normal should look like and what normal should look like for me so again, it's kind of hard to say. Um, obviously I did still have some flare ups last last year, so it definitely didn't completely sort out my, my skin or anything like that, which also might be because there's other factors and other things that are going on and it's not just to do with your gut. My digestion I'd say is still pretty, you know, I don't know, like I don't think it's, it's probably like the healthiest digestive system. So what I do wanna finish off with is whether I think that, um, you know, what my experience was going to see a functional doctor and whether I think it's something that I would recommend. And I would say that, you know, the pros of seeing a, a functional doctor is that they do look very, very holistically at your health. So obviously there's the enormous questionnaire, the lifestyle, the medical history that you do before you even start doing any of the tests, um, which I think is really good because I think often when you go to doctors, mainstream doctors, they, they don't have the time to look into, you know, doing those kind of investigations. I'd say the results are interesting. Like I definitely enjoy doing these tests and kind of seeing what the results are, even though some of them are maybe a little bit scientifically not super robust. And I would say it definitely did work for some things. So, you know, I'm pregnant now, so that was great. Um, and I will definitely kind of go back and see her just for a bit of a checkup afterwards. However, I would say it didn't work for some things like my skin, for example, I'd say that's pretty similar. I said the cons of seeing a functional doctor is that they are very expensive. Uh, the tests are often very 
not cheap. So here in Singapore, they're certainly not covered by insurance. And I would say probably in most places, like um, I don't think in the UK, for example, they're covered by the NHS. I don't know what it's like in America. Maybe it's a little bit more accepted there. But on the whole, they can be very, very pricey, and especially if you're paying out of pocket. As I mentioned before, there, was, there are some things that are still, still sort of scientifically not super robust. So we don't know 100% the reliability uh, of not just the test results of how rigorous they are, but also how we are interpreting them. So there is definitely, you know, potential for misinterpretation, misinformation, especially when things are kind of outside of, of mainstream and regulated medicine. Um, it does become a bit more interpretive and you have to be very careful with what you listen to. And then the final thing I say is just, you know, the treatments are always the same. It's just loads and loads and loads of supplements. And I mean, we are talking so many supplements that I have taken and obviously I did, I, you know, I took all the tests and I, I got all the results. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna go for it now. But my goodness, it's like literally when you're taking like 15 capsules a day, it feels a bit ridiculous, but who knows? Maybe that's what you need to do. Uh, and maybe that's, maybe, maybe that's just kind of part of the process. So that's all I kind of wanted to say uh, on that topic. If you have any questions, if you are interested in learning more or if, there's any details or anything that you want me to cover uh, please just drop a suggestion or a question in the comment section down below and I will try to address it and in the meantime I hope you are keeping super super well uh, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon for another video bye